10 top tips with NX Sheet Metal. Tip 1. New user. Once you become familiar with NX Sheet Metal, make sure you select the advanced role to expose the full capability of the product. Tip 2. Set up materials. Take some time to review the help files and understand the full capability of material definition. Once configured, you can be assured your sheet metal design parts will comply with your company standards for manufacture. Tip 3. Choose a method. With NX Sheet Metal you have three methods to generate your design. Method 1. You can import a part modelled in NX or from a foreign CAD system using any of the standard translators and then convert it using the built-in tools. Here we can see a complex part being imported with a complex additional geometry selected and a successful flat pattern created. Method 2. Create a part by selecting faces from a solid body to wrap the sheet metal around the design envelope. Here we select the different faces and when complete choose where we want the bends to be applied if there's discrepancy. And once the design is finished and the sheet metal part created we can clean up the corners. We can add a three bend corner in this position here and make that suitable for the manufacturing operation and then complete the design. Here we're going to take the part we're going to mirror the entire body and generate the other half of it and then unite the two parts together. This gives us our finished design. Of course, as with any sheet metal part, most importantly, it can be created in the flat form. Method 3. Start from scratch. With a number of base features available, tab being one of them, we can use sketches to build up the actual geometry of the part. Here using region boundary curves, we can just pick the areas we want the part to be created from. Once the base feature has been created, we can then go on and select various edges to create flanges and other features as we extend the design to completion. Tip 4. Designing context. Here we have a part and we have a mounting structure. This mounting structure can be used as a reference point to create the actual sheet metal feature. In this case a flange using the match face option. Here we're using the match face and creating a 4mm offset to create this and then generate a, a deform, a dimple feature in the tab to complete the design. If the main structure actually moves, this is all fully related and wavelength, the part will update accordingly. Tip 5. Multi-body parts. Generate the different aspects of your design as different bodies and then when you finish the design or at a point where you decide that you're going to join these together into a single bracket or single part, you can do so using the bridge bend feature. Just select the related edges and it fills in the material between the two parts. Similarly, you can take intersecting bodies and take material away, again joining and creating this and we now have with two features, the three separate bodies joined together into a single part. Tip 6. Simple parts. Here we have a datum ring and a cable clip and we're going to create a very simple bracket to mount this clip against the ring. We start with our tab command, we use our multi-bend reference and specify a wavelength plane into the part and then go ahead and create the sketch profile and what you can see when projected to the sketch plane is the curves from the selected reference 
and then we can use these curves to generate in a single feature an entire part just by sketching curves and generating the shape. Once the design is finished, the bend is applied as required, and this part now is fully associated to the clip. Now, if that clip should move, then the bracket will update accordingly. Let's do that now. We'll move the component, the clip in this case, and once moved to the new location that is required, and the bracket updates. Tip 7. Lighter parts. Here we have a sheet metal part which is made of 3mm material and what we're going to do is to add some design features to make the part stronger so we can reduce the material thickness and hence have a lighter part with the same strength as it was before. So I've added a couple of bead features, we'll now add a gusset feature in the centre and that really strengthens up the the bend region and then we'll just add a dimple feature to add some strength to the the large flat area on the base of the part. Now we'll go into part properties and we can see our material selection is three millimeters. We can clear that selection and now select a two millimeter material in this aluminium and grade T4. Apply that. In this case we're using a punch and a die form for the bend feature and we now have a lighter, thinner part. Tip 8. Flat patterns. Did you know you can create a flat pattern at any time in the design flow and review the flat form as you create features in this multi-window approach? Here we're creating a, a tab on the end of this part here and if we look at the flat pattern feature we can see we have a warning here to say that there's an interference. On closer inspection on the flat pattern view, we can see we have an interference here that we need to change our design and fix. Tip 9. Flat patterns. Number 2. You can create flat patterns anywhere in the design history. This enables post-forming process steps to be added, i.e. removing extra material drew during the forming process. Here we see some extra material that's needed for the flat pattern to create the bend that's eventually removed in a 3D form. And tip number 10, join the Siemens community. Go to community.sw.siemens.com and join the discussion by signing up and contributing to the NX Sheet Metal Group. I hope you've had some benefit from 10 top tips with NX Sheet Metal.